So I always used to kind of look at some guitarists with a certain amount of how do they do this. The main thing that I used to get this feeling with was to do with chords. And I'd look at someone like Eric Johnson playing and my question would be like, how does he know all these other chords that potentially I don't know or I don't see many other people playing either. Um, so my thinking is that you could take a song that you already know and the goal here is to add new chords to it sort of periodically and in that way one chord at a time you're starting to build in these new kind of chords that you see as available and you know these chords might not just be tied to one song or one place they're instead little things that exist on the fretboard similar to what I talk about with licks to be honest with you um, but in this case we're talking about chords so we build a chord uh, library one chord at a time but what I think is really important is to as soon as you learn a chord try and stick it in context so the context for me today is going to be the tune Little Wing we're going to do it in E minor I think initially it was recorded in E flat tuning um, but this should be kind of a fun one I think because it's you know a nice pace to play guitar at so um our first chord is E minor and so I'll, I'll go with this version of E minor, which is quite pretty. This is one that I use all the time. So what we've got here, we've got our root on the E, then we're barring across here, and we're gonna play on the D string, the fifth fret, and on the B string, the third fret. And this basically then spells out an E minor with this added fourth, E minor kind of 11, right? And we got the nine in the top as well. So we got the nine and the 11. So you can use that pretty much in most places that you see an E minor, unless the E minor is the third in this case. So if you were playing in the key of C major, you couldn't use this without coming across the same problem that we actually get in Little Wing later on, but more about that later. So it's, it would be diatonic as the second uh, or as the sixth. You could use this in place of chord two or chord six. And then our next chord will be a G. So this is a really nice voicing for G that I like to use. So we've got the third fret where our root, and then we're gonna skip the A string so you can kind of use the fleshy part of your thumb. And then we're gonna play the seventh here on the fourth fret of the D string. Then we've got an open G string. Then we've got the fifth here on the third fret on the B string and we got our ninth here on the fifth fret on the E string so we go from and you could think about moving that voice up there that that seventh there like an internal kind of tension to the chord which you could resolve or you could go the other way like that and then this is a, a an easier one i think this might even be in the original so this is like an a minor nine so we're going to play the fifth fret Again, skip the A, and then at the top here. This is the chord two. We could play this for chord six too. And that would work really nicely. So this is what I'm talking about for this B minor here, we've got like a B minor 9, which does happen I think in the original version of Little Wing. 
you wouldn't normally have obviously a C sharp in the key of G major or E minor. But it kind of works in this context, but ordinarily for your chord three, you would want to. Avoid that nine really. You wouldn't really want to put the natural nine there either. So a little wink sort of breaks the rules a little bit there. So our first chord. Then we want something for the B minor, right? So let's think about, this is one of my favorite voicings for a B minor. This will work in place of the second, third or sixth. It's a really nice open kind of voicing. So we got there, the B, the A on the seventh fret, the D on the seventh fret, the E on the fifth fret, and the A on the fifth fret as well. And then you could drop that down for your A minor. And then we want a, a C after that. So here's a really nice kind of open sounding C. Um, we've got a C here on the eighth fret. And then we have an A and a D on the seventh fret. And we have the fifth, the G on the eighth fret, and the nine up here on the tenth fret. You could use this in place of the one, four, or five. That's a nice movable chord. So we get. So yeah, get that. Then I quite like to return to that chord. And maybe, you know, keep that stuff the same. You don't necessarily want to change every single chord in the progression. And that's really kind of dark voicing for a C major. This, you could play this in place of the one or the four. Nice movable. So in this case, I'm playing a third fret G, third fret C, uh, second fret on the D string, and second fret on the G string, and then open B and E. You could use that for those chords, actually. Down to the F, to C. use some of these new chords you might get something that sounds a bit like this then maybe up here for this part And the same could apply for any chord that you basically want to fit in somewhere. Use the context of a song that you already know and check out how these things sound. So, you know, if I had another voicing of E minor that I wanted to check out, maybe something like this.
that's how you can add chords, I think. Um, you know, you could look through a book, find a chord that you like the sound of, and then you think, right, how would I apply that in Little Wing? Where would I find it? And in this way, you can add chords as you go to a vocabulary, use the context of a tune that you already know, that you're familiar with, um, and build a chord library in this kind of way and sort of pin it to a song that you already know or a progression that you know. This could be anything, really. It could be something more simple. Um, and then in that way, so if I took this Alan Holdsworth chord that I like, I could try and uh, apply this to uh, Little Wing in this kind of way. So we're starting with the nine in the bass. So what do I need? I don't know if I'll be able so that'd be my E minor, my G major, and then my A minor, back to e, my E minor, to my B minor, Yeah, that kind of works. Not so much for that bit. Hopefully that was vaguely interesting and gives you some idea about how it is you can add chords to some of this stuff. Patreon will be the place where I'll put together the backing track and kind of the tab um, for this in case you wanted it, um, as well as that's where I put my backing tracks in general and kind of all the accompanying material to my lessons. Leave a comment below if this is the sort of thing that you think people should be making on YouTube or more specifically me. Um, feel free to like and subscribe. I hope that that wasn't an entire waste of your time. Thank you for stopping by. Cheers.